So our scripture reading is from 1 Thessalonians chapter 5, verse 16 and through verse 18. I titled, I titled this message as Thanksgiving, a mindset. Thanksgiving is not an event that we do every first Sunday of the month. Thanksgiving is a mindset, is a way of it is a way of living for everyone that has come to know Jesus as their Lord. So Paul writing to the church would say, rejoice evermore, rejoice evermore, rejoice evermore, pray without ceasing. He says, in everything, give thanks. I told them in the first service that there's no way you can give thanks except for you are full of joy. You cannot give thanks when you are not joyful. It takes a rejoicing heart to give thanksgiving. It takes a rejoicing heart to be thankful. A complaining heart can never be thankful. If you are going to be thankful, so Paul giving us the recipe, say the first thing you must do, if you will live this life of thanksgiving, which is the will of God for us, the first thing we must do is that we must rejoice always because your rejoicing is what determines your prayer, the effectiveness of your prayer. So he started by saying rejoice always and pray without ceasing. If you are not full of joy, you cannot be effective in your prayer. Amen. Unto thee shall all flesh come, thou that answers prayer. So that is a statement of joy, kind of. You are coming because you know God will do something. Can I hear loud? Amen. And verse 18 says, in everything give thanks. For this is the will of God. Thanksgiving is the will of God for you in Christ. But every thanksgiving starts with an act of rejoicing. So in the first service, we talked about how to cultivate the mindset of thanksgiving. How do we cultivate this mindset? We talked about that we must develop the art of rejoicing. We talked about we must cultivate the attitude of gratitude. We also talked about we must make the word of God our inspiration and aspiration. We also talked about we must make the word the prophetic word. We must mirror our situation by the prophetic word. And so today, in this second service, we're going, to be looking, we're going to be looking at how the dynamics of thanksgiving. What makes thanksgiving dynamic? The dynamics of thanksgiving. The levels of thanksgiving. How thanksgiving operates. Where it starts from. Because we can just be talking about thanksgiving and thanksgiving and we don't really know how we cultivate this attitude. Listen, we can't go anywhere in life except we are thankful. People that do great in life are people that are very thankful. Amen. So thankfulness is the reflection of who we are and how we see God. Our thanksgiving is a reflection of who we are and how we see God. Those that are not thankful don't see God as almighty. Those that are not thankful don't see God as the God of all possibility. Tell me your me the, the level of thanksgiving that you have in you. How much thanksgiving, how full is your thinking, is your thanking? How full is your praise for God? I will tell you how you view your God. Scripture talks about there are 12 great leaders in Israel and Moses was telling them to go spy away the land, the promised land. And 10 of them came back with an attitude of complaint. They say we are not able even when God has spoken. And the Bible says when, this, when the people heard their word, their heart melt. Why? It is how they view God. But for two men, Joshua and Caleb, Scripture records that they have another spirit. And that spirit is the spirit of rejoicing. It's the spirit of joy. Because the Bible talks about the joy of the, joy of the Lord becomes our strength. 
When you are weak, when you see God in a certain light, it becomes strength to you. Joy, because, joy begins to, I mean, joy is produced within you and you begin to see how God is being. Am I, am I communicating here? So your thanksgiving measured who you are. Your thanksgiving also reflect how you see God. If you are thankful, you see God as almighty. If you are not thankful, if you are full of complaint, you see that you are helpless and there's nothing God can do for you. Tell me how thankful you are. I'll tell you the level of your faith. Can I hear loud amen? amen? Because they also measure our spiritual maturity. Our thankfulness is the measurement for our spiritual maturity. Your maturity is exhibited in your thanksgiving. So what are the dynamics of thanksgiving? How does thanksgiving express itself in our life? Number one. Through our attitude. Thanksgiving is not only in songs. It has everything to do with our attitude. No wonder I say that your attitude will determine your attitude. If your attitude is the attitude of joy and rejoicing, you will go far in life. I have never seen complainant make it in life. I have never seen people that give excuse succeed in life. It's an attitude. How do you see life? How do you view your situation? What is your attitude towards where you are right now will determine how long you stay in that place. Your attitude is what determines your attitude and Thanksgiving is an attitude thing. It's not only what we say or sing. It's not in the song. It's more in our attitude. How do you respond to God? Are you full of joy? Are you full of rejoicing? Are you glad? Or are you sorrowful? It's an attitude thing. Can I hear loud amen? Psalm 42 verse number 4. My heart is breaking as I remember how it used to be. Psalm is, David is writing this now. He's old. He says, my heart is breaking within me as I remember how it used to be. I walk among the crowd of worshippers. It's an attitude thing. My heart is breaking. When I remember how it used to be. When I remember your goodness. When I remember your, your power that preserves my life. When I remember how you delivered me from many waters. When I remembered how you were there at the ninth, at the eleventh hour, you come true for me. When I remember when, my, when I'm face to the wall, when my face, when I'm backed up and it looks as if everyone around me has given up on me, are you in vain and lift me up? When I remember your goodness, he says, I walk among the crowd of worshippers. Worshippers are thanked. They are full of thanksgiving. True worship is an expression of thanks to God as true prayer is an expression of thanks. We owe him all thanks. He says, when I remember, he says, I walk among the crowd of worshipers leading in a great procession to the house of God, singing with joy, not lamenting. Singing with joy. Oh, you're telling me David doesn't have a problem? He has a lot. But he says, I'm not going to focus on the problem. My focus will be on you, my God. And I will develop an attitude of thanksgiving by cultivating the spirit of rejoicing and joy. Cultivate it. It's not there. 
No one is born with it. It's cultivated. And anything that is cultivated is done intentionally. You choose not to be a complainant. You choose to be a praiseful person. You begin to see things from the light of God. And not from what the world is saying. You begin to look at your situation. Knowing full way. You're looking at your situation with the lens of the almighty God. That's what David is saying here. I was among the singers. I led the procession into your sanctuary. Singing for joy and giving thanks in the midst of the great celebration. He cultivated it. David went through a lot of headache. 1920, he was being chased by the greatest king that ever lived. With all the armies of Israel haunting his life. He finds time to praise him. He knows that if he decides to complain, his life will be finished. He decides to cultivate this attitude of rejoicing. Your mindset, your attitude. It begins with the attitude, the spirit of joy. It's the spirit of joy is what makes rejoicing possible in our heart. How joyful are you? Are you like Paul that says all things work together for good? And because all things is working for my good, I'm not going to complain, but I'm just going to wait and begin to watch on what's and see what God will do with this lemon that I have right now. What are you going to do? Are you going to say, well, I've been expecting God to move on my behalf and it's not yet moved, but I will yet wait on him with rejoicing, knowing full well that God never abandoned any project. And I am a project in his hand. You cannot be thankful except first you have the spirit of rejoicing. And guess what? God does not look at our lips or the words that come from our heart. God measures our attitude when it comes to thanksgiving. Remember it says in his word that some, they worship him with their lips, but their heart is far. So God is constantly looking at your attitude. Are you grateful to him? Are you full of thanks? Even going through that pain, are you still full of thanks? Knowing full whether God will never abandon you. Knowing full whether that at his own time he will rescue and deliver you. Are you full of thanks? So thanksgiving or is a mindset it's not an event. And God expects that our life is a life of thanksgiving. Can I hear loud amen? So Sammy says, I, I, I remember what it used to be. And so I set myself up to cultivate the spirit of joy and rejoicing so that I can celebrate with the worshipers. It's our attitude. Something deep in. It's not only in the song. How grateful are you that you are alive? How grateful are you for 11 months now God has carried you in his wings? Are you looking at the things you don't have or are you looking at what God has done for you? In fact, things that you've not seen and yet God did for you. How grateful are you? Our gratitude is displayed by our attitude. Sammy says, I was young, I'm now old, I've never seen God's forsaking any righteous man. No, he sit back with The second thing about the, the second dynamics of Thanksgiving is that Thanksgiving is sacrificial. It's our sacrifice. Our sacrifice are the way we express our Thanksgiving to God. That's why you hear the Bible talks about the sacrifice of praise. Why is this sacrifice? You know why it's sacrifice? Because sometimes the things walking around you may not look, may not make you to want to thank him. Am I communicating? That's why it's called sacrifice. Your condition may not want you to praise him, but you says no, it's a sacrifice. Thanksgiving is a sacrifice. I'm not 
thanking God because of where I am right now. I'm thanking God because who God is. Because I know he never abandoned the projects. I'm not thanking him right now because of where I am. I am thanking him because I know his capability. Thanksgiving has everything to do with the person and the power of the almighty God. It's not about situations. Giving of thanks is sacrificial. Our praise and worship should be not a thing that we do today in this church and we wait for another seven days to come and do it. It should be a lifestyle. Yes, we may be going through some things and that's why it's called sacrifice. Look at what it says in Psalm, Psalm 107 verse 22. It says, let them sacrifice the sacrifice of thanksgiving. Let them sacrifice the sacrifice of thanksgiving, the dynamics of thanksgiving. I'm looking for a time where people of this church will come and thank God, not because of what he has just done yesterday, but because of who God is. And how they know for a fact that even though they are down right now, God will never leave them down. And so they are thanking him in advance because of his faithfulness and his trustworthiness that they can bank on him. That's what the psalmist says. says. Let them sacrifice the sacrifice of thanksgiving and declare his work with rejoicing. Attitude. We'll talk about that more. Go with me to Psalm 26. So let's, let's, let's do Psalm 50. We read this in the first service. Psalm 50 verse 14 and 23. He said, make, make thankfulness your sacrifice to God. Make thankfulness, thanksgiving, thankfulness, your sacrifice to God and keep your vow you made to the Most High. But giving thanks is a sacrifice, is, is, is a sacrifice that truly honors God, truly honors Him if we keep to His path. Psalm 116, same psalm. He says, I will offer unto him the sacrifice of thanksgiving. It's sacrificial. You know why? It has everything to do with joy. You know why? Joy is a commandment. God commands us to be joyful always. Rejoice always. And I say rejoice. Even when things are not going well, Scripture commands us to rejoice. Why is he commanding us to rejoice? Because God is able to do exceedingly abundantly above all we can think or imagine. That thing you think is impossible, God can make it possible. In fact, not that God can. God will make it possible in the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. God will make it possible in the name of Jesus. The third dynamics of thanksgiving is, is our testimony, becoming a bearer of good news. You can't thank God without becoming a testimony and a testimony bearer. Amen. Dynamics of thanksgiving. Psalm 26, verse number 7. That I may publish the voice of thanksgiving. That I may publish. It is so winners that publish the voice of thanksgiving. The reason why we are not seeing more thanksgiving in the church is because we don't have too many soul winners. Can I hear loud amen? It says that I may publish with the voice of thanksgiving and tell of all your wondrous work. I love the way the New International put it. It says singing a song of thanksgiving and telling of all your wonders. Dynamics of thanksgiving. We do it by becoming a testimony in our society, in our street. In our job, every time we give, we share the good news, we're giving thanks. Because you can't share the good news of what God has done to you without thanking him. When we become sharer of the good news, we become people that live the lifestyle of thanksgiving. If you want to live the lifestyle of thanksgiving, you must be a witness of Christ. And you know why you, must, you are a witness of Christ? Because the Holy Ghost tabernacles you and the goodness of God is in you. Amen. Let me close with this. How do we live a, life of, a lifestyle of thanksgiving? I'll give you four points. 
and we'll be done. Number one, you must watch your word. If you're going to live a life of thanksgiving, you must watch what you, what you utter out. Because like, guess what? If you're going to live a life of thanksgiving, you don't utter everything you go through. You only utter it from the very lens of God. What you, what you say out is exactly what you think, what you know God is saying about your life. Can I hear loud amen? Number two, we must give generously, not only with money, we must give our time, our energy, we must be generous. You cannot live a life of thanksgiving and you are not generous. You cannot just want to cultivate a life of thanksgiving and you are not generous. Generosity is one of the hallmark of the people that are very thankful. How generous are you? The proof of you being thankful is your ability to be generous to people around you. Not only people that come to your church. Amen. Number three, if we're going to cultivate this lifestyle of thanksgiving, not only we watch our world, not only are we generous to the people around us, both in kind and in cash. Our generosity should not be limited to only in kind. It's also in cash. Don't be only kind to pray for people. Be kind enough or be generous enough to give them some cash. Be helpful. Think about the people that are less privileged. That's how you are thankful to God. When you begin to reach out. Don't forget I told us that one of, the, one of the dynamics of thanksgiving is our sacrifice. Not only sacrificing to God, but living a sacrificial life whereby our life, we make sure our life actually touch everyone around us positively. Be a giver, not a taker. Love to be a giver. At every given time, wants to give. You want to be thankful? Look for avenue to be a giver. Be generous with everything you do. That's one way I've lived my life. And God has been so sufficient to me. I always want to, I'm finding ways to be a giver. What can we do? What can we give out? That's my mindset. And that mindset is actually came out of me being thankful for where God has brought me from and where God is taking me to. Very generous. Amen. As a church, we're very generous. Because we know our generosity is a sign that we are thankful to God. Because the giver is superior to the taker at any time. Telling them in the first service, one of our pastors here called me and said, well, Can we donate to a, church, to a school? I said, Yeah, go ahead, let's donate it. Now we just did it. Was that last week here? We donated 11 monitors. Yeah, we want to do more. I was telling Minister Peter, I said, Come, we need to talk to these guys in canton here. There's a, a shelter there. We need to send money there down there. We don't want to be a taker, we want to give. That's how I want to be thankful. That God, guess what? It's better. I can't get what we're not asking. Yeah, we're giving. It's better. I'd rather be in this place giving out than be in a place taking in. But it comes with the attitude of gratitude and being thankful. You being generous doesn't mean God is going to flood your account with 100 million. It starts with that one penny you have. Your attitude towards that little. Pastor, don't worry when I have, when I hit the jackpot, when I hit it. When you hit it, you are still going to behave the way you're behaving right now. Because it will be very difficult to part with $10,000 for some of us here. Amen. The third thing is that we must cultivate kindness. Be kind to one another. And last, not the least, we must be a sharer of the good news. See, the Lord gave the word greater the company of those that publish it. Are you a carrier of good news? 
You can't be thankful and your mouth is shut. What are you thankful about? Have you told people around you about the God in you that is going to do great things in you? How thankful are you? How thankful are we? For the fact that you are alive, are you thankful? You know, every time I wake up, I just, and I can move this hand. Every time I can roll from my bed and touch the earth, kind of, I say, God, thank you. My whole system is working. Oh, thank you. I'm grateful. And I will share of your goodness. Thanksgiving is, is, is sacrificial. Those that give thanks, they are those that glorify God. And God always shine on them. May God shine on you. May the spirit of rejoicing come upon you. But we must be a soul winner. We must be people that delivers the good news. That is, the, that is what makes us thanks givers. If there's anything like that were able to go out there and share our good news. Ability to be a publisher of the good news by the means of we thanking God. As we have published the good news, we are thanking him. My prayer for this church is that as we go to become the good news bearer in thanksgiving, that guess what? I was wretched. He made me whole. I was a sinner. He forgave me. I am thankful. I owe it to God and to my Lord Jesus Christ. Are you thankful about those little things that we call little things? Your salvation, your deliverance, and the things God has done for you. Are you thankful about those? If you are thankful, the first thing you do, you become a publisher. You publish those things. That's what the Bible says. You publish it. And so, Father, we just want to thank you for your people. I don't know who is here if you have not given up your, life, your life to Jesus and you want to make him your Lord. Can I see your hand up as we all stand in prayer? Hallelujah. Oh, hallelujah. Is there anyone here that wants to give their life? You are, or those of us watching? Just make Jesus your Lord. That's the beginning. All starts with him, Jesus. Making him your Lord, making him your Savior is just the key. It's actually what generates or what originates the spirit of rejoicing, the real spirit of rejoicing. So, Father, I just want to thank you for your people. Pray thank you because you are touching their hearts. You are causing us, oh God, to, to oh God, cultivate that spirit of joy, the spirit of rejoicing. The Lord, knowing full well that our thanksgiving is sacrificial, that we are thanking you because of your worthiness, of your ability to deliver us. And so, Lord, I pray for your people, those that are, oh God, in that place, oh God, and they're looking up and the world is drawing them and says, no, you cannot. I pray, Lord, that their faith will be developed, oh God, by you baptizing them afresh with the spirit of rejoicing. In the name of Jesus Pray, oh God, for the spirit of joy to come upon every man and every woman in this church so that, Lord, we can, oh God, actualize that which you have spoken concerning our life. I pray, oh God, that they will be, they will be able to cultivate, oh God, the spirit of thanksgiving by the spirit of joy that, oh God, you have placed in them through the Holy Ghost in the name of Jesus. Father, I pray that, Lord, everything that your heart has desired, Lord, as they thank you and as they worship you, Lord, I pray you will bring it to pass for them in the name of Jesus. You will cause rejoice sin to come upon every home represented here, every family represented here. I declare the spirit of rejoicing to possess them in the name of Jesus. Father, we give you praise. In Jesus' name we pray. Thank you for watching. For more information, please contact the church at Fountain of Grace, 427 Turnpike Street, Canton, Mass., 02021 or give us a call at 781-821-1121.
you can email us at admin at fogbos.org or visit us online at fogbos.org.